Welcome to module 6.5. In this lesson we'll learn about vertical bracing systems. Revit can create parametric vertical bracing by using a parameter to define the positions of the bracing. Essentially the bracing is either connected to a column or the primary beam. The brace position is described with 0 which is the start of the member or 1 which is the end of the member. In the three images below, you can see the chevron bracing on the right hand side is connected halfway along the frame, hence 0 0.5. Vertical bracing can be created with the aid of a framing elevation. The framing elevation elevates the framing along a grid line and just takes a small distance beyond the grid. Below, you can see the framing elevation with chevron bracing placed and the associated properties displayed. The ratio in this case is set to 0.5. Go ahead and open up Project A. The project opens in a 3D view. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at vertical bracing systems. We'll begin by changing to a plan view. In the project browser, go ahead and open up the 00, zero ground floor plan. We're going to place some bracing between grids 4 and 5 along grid E. So let's zoom up on this position. Then we'll select the view ribbon. And on the view ribbon, we have an elevation drop down menu. On this menu, you'll notice that we have a standard building elevation and we also have a framing elevation. Let's select framing elevation. On the context ribbon, you'll note here we could reference another view if we had a view from a manufacturer that we wanted to display and reference. On the options bar, you'll note that attached to grid is already checked by default and this will allow the framing elevation to actually snap to the grid and stay attached. Notice as I move my cursor above and below the grid, the framing elevation will either look into the structure or out of the structure. In this case, of course, we want to look into the structure, so I'll select this position here. In the project browser, you'll note here that we now have a new folder that's been created, Elevations Interior Elevation. Let's go ahead and double click on Elevation 1A. You'll now notice that the elevation is created and you can see that Revit automatically crops the view in between the two grid positions that we selected. So we have a bay of framing here in between grids four and five. You'd also notice that it elevates from the base to the top of the structure. We can go ahead here and select the crop box and we can then use the grips here just to adjust the position of the crop. In this case, we just want to show the first, second and third floors. If required, you can also expand the amount of information that it shows just by adjusting the crop box to the left and the right, like so. Then we can zoom in and we're now ready to create our bracing. The bracing will be constrained to the grid that the framing elevation was placed on. So let's first start by selecting the brace command. Go ahead and select the structure ribbon and on the structure ribbon, you can see we have brace. This is very, very different from a beam. So we must use brace for bracing objects. And of course, bracing elements are always in tension. So let's go ahead and select the brace tool. On the context ribbon, we'll start by selecting load family. In this example here, let's go ahead and navigate to structural framing. And then we'll go into steel. And here, we're just going to go ahead and use some flat plate. So you'll see we've got plate here and we'll click open. In the properties palette in the type selector, you'll note here there's just one type of plate bracing. We're going to change this, so we'll select edit type. And here, I'm just going to rename this and we'll create some bracing that's going to be 10 by 100. And of course, now we can change the B to 10 and the D dimension to 100. And there's our new steel stock created. We'll select OK. We'll also make sure that we're using the same grade of steel so that's going to be metal steel 43275 and click OK. We can now create our bracing. In this example here, we're going to use X bracing. So I'm going to start over here and you can see I can snap to the end point in this location. Then notice as I come up to this main beam here, I'm snapping to the center line. I'm just going to approximately place the brace in this location. And I'll then create another brace from the base of this column again to the center line of the beam. Again, I'll just approximate the position. We'll do the same again on the next level up. 
and there's our cross brace in place. To exit the brace command, we can go ahead and select modify on the context ribbon. Let's now select this first brace element. If we go ahead and look in the properties palette here, and what I'm going to do here is just expand the properties palette so we can read all of the settings a bit clearer. You can see here, currently we have a start attachment, which is the ground, which in this case is incorrect. So we're going to change that to first. And then we have an attachment elevation. Notice this is set to zero at the moment. If I wanted this to perhaps connect 150 millimeters above the slab, then you can see I can just simply type in 150. But in this case, I want that to be zero. And then the end attachment type is currently distance. And this is telling me that this is 734 millimeters from this end of the grid. In this example, I'm going to change end attachment type to ratio. If I set the ratio to zero, you can now see that the brace attaches to the start of the beam. Perhaps if I set this to 0 0.5, you can now see that attaches halfway along the beam or 50% of the way along the beam. And of course here, if I typed in one, I've now got a vertical member. So in this case, I want to set that to zero. I'll select the next brace along. Once again here, you can see that set to a distance. So I'll change that to ratio and again, change the ratio to zero. I can then continue up to the next frame here. The only thing we might have to do is change the start attachment level reference. So this is now going to be the second floor in here. And once again, the end attachment type will be ratio and that will be zero. We'll select this one here. That's going to be second floor. And of course, this will be a ratio and that will also be zero. OK, so you can now see our bracing placed out. Let's now look at that in the 3D view. So we'll switch to the 3D view. And we can now see our bracing. What I'd like to do here is adjust the clash. So what's actually happening is these two flat braces actually go past each other. Currently, they're clashing in the center. Now, of course, in reality, they'd flex past each other. But, you know, if we don't want to clash in our model, what we can do is this. You'll notice that we have geometric position here. And what I'm going to do is just offset this in the Y value. So I'm going to offset this member 10 millimeters. You can now see that this flat brace is in front of this one here. And I'll do the same thing over here. We'll select this brace and we'll go to Y offset value and set that to 10. Okay, so you can now see that we've created our vertical bracing and we've made use of a framing elevation. We've also made use of the ratio function, which means if this bay changes geometry or the floor to floor height changes, the brace will parametrically adapt and update. Okay, let's make sure that we've saved our project and that concludes this lesson.